Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Giuseppina. I am an intuitive healer and I talk about lots of topics that have to do about healing or subconscious programming, healing from trauma, and um, also about my journey with autism. So um, before I get started, I wanted to show you these earrings. Um, look how cute they are. They say, oh, go away. As many of us are uh, very introverted and don't want to be around people you can imagine how excited i was when i saw these at a market and i immediately snatched them up so this is um i'm just putting a shout out for this because i want to support small little businesses and companies this is um by designs by erica and it's with a k erica b i will put the link in the comment um in my um heading thing whatever it's called after so if you're interested you can check it out she has lots of things not just earrings and lots of cute designs super cute ones so go check it out okay today's topic is about autism and alcohol and addiction etc and why that tends to be higher for a lot of people i'm going to share with you my own journey with that and um you know why i think that is now you can go look up all the information on it. What I will share is that new evidence suggests that uh, up to, you know, there's new evidence suggests that it's as high as 50% of autistic people who have struggled with substance abuse or alcoholism addiction and things like that. That's a very high number. And what is scary is that I totally can see why that is. And I honestly suspect it might even be higher than that um, because of the nature of what it means to, not what it means, but how it feels like to be someone who is autistic and to exist in a very neurotypical programmed society. So let me start with my situation, my story, and how my life was impacted by alcohol. So uh, growing up, I was very quiet. I didn't talk. I had what you would call now that I know is select selective mutism. I did not speak at school. I only spoke when it was like about subjects and things like that. Like our, our you know, when a teacher would call on me, which she always did because I was the smartest student in the class. And so I would always have the answer. And there were many times where I wouldn't put my hands up because I didn't want to speak, but she would just pick me. <laughs> the teacher would just pick me because she knew that I would have the answer. And obviously I would answer because I didn't know how not to obey. Like, you know, if somebody asked me something. And so it'd be this awkward position that, you know, people would call me like teacher's pet and the brainer and all these like names um, because of that. So I already was... Not that I was antisocial, because not that I didn't want to be social, but it was hard for me to be social. I just didn't want to be. I didn't know how to be. And it was, um, I don't know, I just wasn't interested in it for many reasons. So fast forward to when I was in high school. Most of high school, I can say that I also kind of followed that same thing. I was not social. I found like that one or two people that like I became really close with and usually like that it would be like that one best friend who would latch onto me and they would be like the main character energy. And I was just like their quiet sidekick. That's the dynamic of most of my friendships growing up. And it was always just like that one best friend. I always had that one best friend. It was this person. I'm going to say their names just to be there. It was one girl in high school before that. It was another girl. Um, after that it went through and I would change best friends over and over again. Um, because they were like, let's face it, all the majority, all of them were um, not very, you know, nice to me and did some things that were kind of backstabby and like frenemy kind of stuff, you know. And I was just kind of going along with that always very, um, you know, obliging and, and polite because that's how I was. I was very people pleasing. So let's go back to the beginning of high school. Um, not the beginning of high school. So around 17 or something when I started partying and stuff and I had an older sister. She was five years older than me. So she would take me out with her while she was going out drinking with her. So I don't know where you're watching this from, but drinking age here is 19. So in case you're like wondering, oh, what are you doing going out drinking? So it's not very uncommon for minors to drink here. I'm not like, you know, supporting people to go out drinking and stuff, but it wasn't so taboo 
with us because especially like being Italian, alcohol was something that wasn't like kept from us growing up. So with that being said, once I became like older and started going out in these social situations and that was like the norm with older kids that people start to go out to parties and things like that and you want to be part of that thing. So when I learned that if I drank that I would get like tipsy, I'm going to say this right now. This is stuff that I realized now. I didn't necessarily understand just how much it was like helping me in those situations. I mean, there was probably like a part of me that knew that I was drinking to help me in the social situations. In fact, I knew that if I was going to be going out around people that I would have to drink. Um, but I didn't understand then why that was or necessarily how much that was impacting it and why as much as I do now because I know now that I'm autistic which I didn't know back then so I would go out drinking and I knew that um that was the only way for me to go out to these social things I was awkward I was shy I would say stupid things I would have conversations and say things and people would look at me like I have five heads so <laughs> Being in social situations was never comfortable for me until I discovered alcohol because I can just be like very, you know, out there and fun and bubbly and just like be this like, and it's not that I'm not that kind of person, but when you're tipsy, if you have been tipsy or drunk before, you know that you're just like super like extra and I would all of a sudden be very outgoing and extroverted which I'm not and um I'm never like a mean drunk I'd just be like happy and just like really like ooh kind of thing and fun and um uh, and not shy and able to talk and I didn't have to talk about the weird stuff I would normally talk about because I didn't think about those things when I was drunk I was just being silly and I can talk about anything when I was drunk like the neurotypical things that people care about <laughs> sorry I don't mean to be rude but things that are like not important to me that I wouldn't care about like but I can easily talk about any of those things while I was drunk I could easily relate to other people I could easily like um be like them when I was drunk and so I was it was kind of like this thing where I felt like I was able to blend in better and so I don't think like I think like I said I think that I did know that I you know it would be I need to have like drinks and stuff I didn't realize that I needed to have drinks I just felt like you know if I'll have a drink I'll be less shy I think that's how I thought of it back then that I'll drink to not be shy because I just thought I was really shy um so I would drink to not be shy but with that um a lot of times i would drink too much because i would just be partying so much and um there's this thing that talks about how we don't have interception i think it's called how autistic people don't have the same cues as when they've reached a limit or when things have to happen so either when they have to go to the bathroom they might not know until like they're like really scrambling and really need to go to the bathroom if they eat they might not know that they're full until like now they're like so full they're gonna throw up and i think honestly that it's probably the same with alcohol they don't really realize how much alcohol they've had until it's like to pass that point so there were a lot of times where i was just drink too much and it was not like good I would drink too much often and um, I would just get sick quite a few times and this would happen for I don't know I I don't want to say that this was like the norm that I would get sick all the time but there were a couple times where other people had to like care for me um, like my sister had to take care of me once um, my boyfriend had to take care of me once and most of the times I would just be like on my own and stuff but either way, there was never a time where I could do a social setting without drinking. It was just how it had to be. I couldn't go to these things sober because um, I just didn't know how to talk to people. 
if I needed to interact with people and stuff like that, like being sober was not going to be it because I would just sit in the corner of the room and not talk to anybody. So now moving to my 30s, I kind of like ended up stopping and not drinking as much. And then once I started going through my spiritual awakening at my like the mid 30s and the 30s, I didn't want to drink anymore. It started affecting me different alcohol. And um, I realized like now, I think during this part of my life, I started limiting like who I was around. I started placing boundaries. I started cutting people out of my life. I started only being with people that I really wanted to. And so it's kind of, a, what is it? Pruning, pruning the the tree and cutting the dead weight out of my life. And, and that was allowing me to be, have more better connections and more honest and authentic connections, people that I was comfortable being around. And, and so the more I did that, the less, I all like I just didn't want to drink. I I don't like the feeling that it gives me anymore. And I just I just don't have that kind of relationship with alcohol. Like it in the past it would be that I would even drink sometimes when I was alone if I would in moods because it helped me to cope with things. And at, later on it would go on to be something that I would use it to cope with when I was feeling immense emotions because I didn't know how to cope with it and so even when I first moved into this apartment and I was my ex was like my nurse's ex was like kind of one of the discard phases or ghosting phases and so I remember drinking a lot during that time and I would come home and drink like a bottle of wine every single day and just cry and because I didn't know how to cope with life. Things were overwhelming. I was struggling with things. And I had my emotions um, were different. Plus moving out of my house. Um, I know now. But the change of my routine and my life. Um, such a big change in my life had caused this immense upheaval in my life. And I was having a extreme difficulty coping. And I didn't understand like why I was feeling so depressed and upset and I didn't have anyone to talk to so I drank. So that was my relationship with alcohol. So I don't drink anymore. It's very rare when I have a drink. I might have one sparingly here and there and it's honestly very little. I'm <laughs> like I'll, I'll get a glass and the minute I might feel tipsy is when I will not drink anymore and I will have some water because I don't want to be drunk. I don't like the feeling of being drunk at all. And it's just something that it doesn't appeal to me anymore. Uh, luckily, I'm not someone who has had a dependency with alcohol. And I'm very fortunate because it's not unfortunate. That's not the case with a lot of people. And I think this um, affects uh, men with, who are autistic much differently. Um, I think that the rate, I feel like the addiction uh, numbers, the st statistics would be much higher for them because of the na very nature that men just in general already don't know how to communicate and talk and are raised in this paradigm where men don't share their feelings and they're not vulnerable and they don't do these things. We have to be tough. So I think like it would be much higher with men. Um, and so I would imagine it would be. So I think that for many autistic people during a period in their lives, or maybe even still, if this is you, a lot of people had like knowing what I know now, I realized that um, alcohol helped me to mask easier or to be more outgoing and extroverted while being, seeming more outgoing and extroverted while being my sort of unmasked self. And so it allowed me to have this buffer that was like this very acceptable way to interact with people by drinking is very socially accepted and so it became like this tool to help me um navigate and exist in those types of places um to feel like I was part of society and and belonged and was able to have like a social life because if it wasn't that I would probably not social life. My social life was people online. I was like this big nerd. I had friends online and I still have a lot of those friends still online. I, this is before we had social media. We didn't have YouTube and, uh, do did we have YouTube? 
I can't remember. I think we might have had YouTube back then, but we didn't have social media, no Facebook or Instagram or any of those things. Things were like on message boards. So the only people who were online back then were us nerds. <laughs> uh, hands up if you're one of those people <laughs> watching this right now. All the people right now, like so many people who, who are like these influencers, well, I can't say that. I don't want to say that. But there's so many people online right now that use social media that would never be like the online type when I was online, when I was like, you know, 19 and stuff like that, because that was for us like super nerds, <laughs> like introverted and shy and didn't talk to anyone. So you'll know what I'm talking about if you're one of those people, if you relate to this. So if I didn't have alcohol, I just would have been that person. And maybe that would have been good. Maybe that would have been better. Maybe things would have been different for me. Maybe I wouldn't have had the types of crappy relationships that I did. Who knows? I don't know. But that was my experience with alcohol. I it really like offered that tool to like I said to blend in seeming less seem, seamlessly seamlessly with the neurotypical world without appearing too awkward and weird which honestly most people already thought I was awkward and weird uh, when I got older in situations especially at work I would get comments about like the way I would be when I was being myself it's always like people would look at me like it was weird if I if we're having conversations and I would say things people would just look at me like like what is she talking about <laughs> or just or the worst is they would just like ignore me and, and go on to talk about something else and just totally disregard me and this still happens to this day with people and it's the most upsetting thing. This is why I don't hang out with most people anymore. And I only have my chosen friends and family. And I cannot tell you like how different that makes you feel. Because there's nothing worse than hanging out with people, especially neurotypical people, who just like look at you like you have five heads and you're saying something that might be so valuable and wonderful and they just can't understand it. And so instead of trying to understand you, they just disregard you. And so when I was younger, I didn't know how to deal with that maybe. And I feel like alcohol made it easier to deal with that. It made it, um, I want to say easier, it made it possible. That's the word I'm looking for. It made it possible for me to deal with that. Because when you're young and you're trying to find your space and your spot in the world, you don't know anything you're just trying to like figure shit out and so once you're older and you get to my age you know you're just like f this and you're not willing to put up with those things you start to learn you start to learn about yourself you start to kind of meet your own needs and you start to develop things like hopefully a little bit earlier than i did but unfortunately a lot of us autistic people feel like we're often very behind in life for a variety of reasons so now i I've chosen that I don't want to be around that anymore. I don't want to be around people who make me feel like that. That if I can't be my sober, awkward, weird self and not be appreciated and not be a value, not be valued, not made to feel like I'm weird or on drugs or like I have five heads or completely disregarded and ignored from what I'm with what I'm saying. If if any of that is occurring, then I, that's something I don't want to be a part of. And I don't want to have to drink alcohol to try to fit into that mess, whatever that is, because that is not anything that I want to be a part of. I'm pointing over there, but you know what I'm talking about? This thing. I don't want to be part of that. I want to be part of this thing where I am, which is amazing. It's brilliant and it's bright and it's exuberant and all these beautiful, wonderful things. And I want to be around the people sober that can also appreciate that and can exist within this wonderful magical world of who I am uh, and who they are and that we can appreciate one another and that we can info dump and be like our weirdo selves together and not feel awkward and out of place or any of those things that's what I want and that's the space I want to create with everyone so anyways this video is going a little longer than I wanted to but I wanted to share my experience and why that is probably a reason why we have struggled with addiction, alcoholism, substance abuse, etc. I'd love it if you want to share your experience with this. You don't have to, obviously, but we, we maybe we can have a conversation around it. And if you need help, um, maybe I'll see if I can post some links down below of some places where we can get some help. And that's all. Please take care of yourselves. Know that you don't need to change yourself for anyone that you are perfect exactly 
as you are in that there is community around you. Find the people who are like you. Find the people who value you and lift you up. And you might not have been raised in that environment, but you can seek them elsewhere, elsewhere and create your chosen family. Create your chosen spaces and curate them how you want them to. That'll be soft and protective and joyful and where you will feel loved and seen and held. This is so incredibly important. You have no idea. Anyways, I wish you so much love if you are struggling and there's nothing wrong with you. Please remember that you are not doing anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with you and there is help out there if you need help. Okay, that's all. Take care, you guys. Take care of your take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you soon. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. I'd really, really appreciate it. That's all. Take care. Bye.